Have you ever seen a child react like this? Hey, no, 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 give me the iPad. After a phone or tablet was taken away from them. What? What's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Because we just investigated this trend. Mommy, what? Oh, not right now. <laughs> Mama, I'll bring the iPad back later, okay? And the results are disturbing. Nightfam, <laughs> if this reminds you of a kid in your life right now, you definitely cannot skip this video. And the data I'm about to share with you is essential for anyone living in today's time. He's just always in his own world. He really quiet for real as he know you. This is the dark future of iPad kids, also known as the generation Alpha. Apparently, um, this eighth grade kid cannot spell a single word correctly on his list. We're talking about anyone in your family who is 13 years old or younger right now. Kids who were born at the same time as the iPad in 2010. Kids who at eight years old already had their first phone. <laughs> And they're the only humans in the history of the world to have grown up with a gadget as a babysitter. Mama, bring it back, okay? I mean, some of these kids haven't even experienced what it's like to get dirty and play outside with neighbors. They literally cannot comprehend a life without social media. And sadly, their parents have chosen the easy way out, using the iPad to shut them up. And don't get me wrong, I can kind of understand you. Many of you parents are just tired, that's why you do this. At least, I want to hope so. But see, the temporary relief of five minutes when you're letting a gadget take care of your crying child has a permanent curse in exchange and it lasts for a lifetime. And it's important to say that this isn't just my opinion. This is data. Just recently, school teachers came out saying these iPad-raised kids are doing really bad. The teachers who have taught their entire lives are just up and quitting their jobs now because they can't handle these kids anymore. The iPad kids are out of control. They can easily tap on touch screens, but cannot do basic things like reading or writing. They quite literally don't have the muscles built in their hands to write properly or have the stamina to write because these kids weren't using their hands enough as children. They tend to also get lower scores on language and critical thinking. And sure, they know how to navigate digital apps, but in exchange, they are years late in their education. I teach seventh grade, they are still performing on the fourth grade level. Are you joking right now? And these are future leaders, our future doctors, our future nurses, our future... Please. And because many of them were pretty much raised by an emotionless gadget that doesn't care about them, they're growing up to be, well, the same way. Having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life. They don't respect any authority. You ask them, can you stand in your designated spot? They're telling you no and shut up. They're throwing things at each other. For more data, if your child is getting more than two hours of screen time daily, a long-term study has showed that they are likely to have emotional, social, and attention problems. Kids cannot read. They cannot right they are ill mannered since looking at the screen for a long time limits children's ability to read faces they get a harder time learning social skills and even empathy <laughs> which leads to kids who might act like this Like they have anger issues, because when you train them to have everything in an instant, they don't even get to learn about patience. I'm taking away your iPad. No. Give me the iPad. They don't even get a chance to be challenged or learn how to cope with difficult feelings. Uh... Okay. Alright. They detach and disconnect. Well, then you can read and... <laughs> And it is so heartbreaking that all of this wrong exposure is happening at such a crucial age. Because, for even more data, 
at the early age of five. Up to 90% of a child's brain has already developed, meaning whatever their brain learns within this period will lay the foundation of how they will be as an adult. Look, there's your books down there. You wanna, you, you wanna read a book with Dada? You want an iPad? And guys, the reason why this is so urgent is because when it's too late to catch up on all these things because your child or your sibling or whoever was too busy only watching the screen, scientifically, it might be too late to revive them later on in their life. But I take a closer look and she's playing a YouTube short and the mom looks pissed, like she, she is totally out of it. Only time will tell how bad it could get. But given the alarming data in 2017 that nearly 80% of children have access to a tablet and that one out of four preschool age kids has a digital device, we might be raising an entire generation of future adults who will not know how to innovate because they rarely played with toys that sparked their imagination. They probably have no imagination because their brain hasn't actually been forced to come up with any original thought. Who are more short-sighted than ever, ironically more connected but also more lonely and likely untrusting because they have been so exposed to the nasty side of reality through their screens. I mean, do you notice how our Gen Z teens today seem to suffer way more from anxiety, depression, ADHD, dysmorphia, and all the other mental health issues? That so many parents who grew up without iPads, without iPhones, without smart devices, act as if they have no clue what to pull out if they take the iPad away. That's why it's just so ironic because Steve Jobs himself who created the iPad once said that he would never allow his own kids to use them. The Apple founder actually would not let his own kids play with computers. Because he himself knew he created an addictive machine that is specifically manufactured for your kids to get hooked. Yes, your kids are being targeted with overstimulation, with YouTube channels like Coco Melon, using the brightest colors, flashing lights, and memorable music, all acting like like stimulants in children's minds. They won't be able to resist this. They are almost hypnotized by it. And soon, like junkies who need to get their next fix, everything else to them in the real world will pale in comparison. But won't even watch the hockey game because they're too busy playing a game of hockey on the iPad instead of watching the hockey in real life. Because now that they are raised by the algorithms, they are bored by reality. Until the online world they always watch starts to blend with their real life and they find it difficult to see the difference between both. I mean, let's be honest, I'm sure you've noticed how some kids these days already speak and act like they are in videos. And perhaps the most disturbing thing is not just what they watch, but who is watching them. If you don't guard your child enough, they can encounter evil channels on YouTube or TikTok that fool kids with twisted versions of cartoons. On the left of the screen, there's the real episode of Peppa Pig. And on the right, that fake that you're talking about, fear, torturous appearance. If you post your kid's face on social media, it can be free for any creep to view and download. And if you don't monitor what music or shows they consume, they will start idolizing questionable people, normalizing horrible things way too soon. You guys' daughters are twerking at five! Five! Where's the parenting? But, night fam. Hearing all of these concerning things, is the problem really with the iPad or is the problem with the parenting? This will be her first iPad, but she had three tablets. Currently on the third one right now, because the other two broke. But yeah, moms, what do you all think? I might get it for her either way. Because while these future problems are very real, it's also true that these gadgets do help the kids be smarter too. After all, the iPad is only just a tool. It's all about making sure you use the tool and not let the tool use you. Finally, how can you save your kid from this dark future? It's simple 
Embrace being a parent and let your kid be a kid. When they throw a tantrum, talk to them through it. Don't just give them the tablet to get peace. That's why the iPod's up there on top of that cupboard. So little boys don't get it. Let them go outside and touch grass. Let them have the same rich childhood you had. Because boredom is really where their creativity can shine. And if you absolutely have to give your kid that iPad, make sure they are at least three years old and please keep it to a minimum until they learn to never look for it anymore. What do you want? I want the iPad. I told you you can't have it. Until they finally realize that real life and real experiences will always be way more special. I need everybody else in my generation to promise that we are not going to raise iPad children. Please. Night fam, with an open heart and a genuine interest to make this world a better place, please share this video with your friends and family. If you believe that iPad kids deserve a better future. And if we care enough to make this come true, we should start by giving them a better childhood.